Now, in today's video, I'm going to talk about... What am I talking about? Now, in today's video, I'm talking about 10 things I wish I knew when I started cycling. And here's a photo of me when I started cycling. I think personally, a lot of people find road cycling in the UK quite intimidating. There's lots of clubs, there's lots of people, there's lots of rules that shouldn't really be rules. There's lots of stuff there which is ultimately becoming a barrier for people getting into the sport. And the biggest thing is being accessible, open and easy to talk to, in my opinion. So that is my pre-tip tip thing about cycling. If you're in a club, invite people along, be open, be welcoming, be friendly. If you want to go for a ride with your local club, just drop them a message on social media. Generally speaking, they'll be more than happy to bring you out on a ride and let you see what the club is like. Being part of a club is a fantastic thing for so many people. It's a really good social thing and it's an opportunity to meet new people and push yourselves. So really do consider if you're thinking about joining a club, joining it. And if you are a club, being open and friendly. Now then, the 10 things. Number one, wear whatever you want. There is literally no rules. If you want to wear a baggy jumper and jeans, wear a baggy jumper and jeans. If you want to wear flamboyant baggy trousers with flowers and Thomas the Tank Engine on them, wear them. There's no rules. You can wear whatever you want when you're cycling. But one thing that I think is a great thing to think about is wearing a set of bib shorts that have a pad in them. You can get bib shorts that don't have a pad in them, but the pad gives you an additional bit of support and comfort when you're riding. These pads are often made from foam of different densities and they have like contouring like this, which is gonna help aid your comfort. Bib shorts are basically shorts which have straps on them, like so. You can get ones that don't have straps on them, so there's definitely loads of different options out there. These ones are from Lacole and they also have pockets on the side, which I personally really like because you can put additional food and stuff in there. So yeah, number one. Consider wearing bib shorts, but also remember you can wear whatever you want. Number two, eat more. Oh. When you're cycling, you need to be eating a lot. Anyway, when you're cycling, you need to eat a lot to fuel the time on the bike. British Cycling's recommendation is one gram of carbohydrate per one kilogram of body weight. So if you're 80 kilograms, 80 grams of carbohydrates an hour. This bar from Sturka is 50 grams of carbohydrate. This powder, which you put in your drinks, is 90 grams of carbohydrate. And they do gels which have 50 or 30 grams of carbs in them as well. Also look into things like sweets, gummy bears, jelly babies, roast potatoes, sandwiches, Mix it up, carb-based foods, there's lots of different options out there. And ultimately they're gonna allow you to keep riding and keep performing. Carbohydrate is a great form of energy when you're riding. So make sure you're fueling yourself well, whether that is with space food or a slice of cake. Number three, you don't have to use clip-in pedals. You can use flat pedals if you want, but if you are considering going into clip-in pedals, Using mountain bike pedals is a great first place to start. When I first started cycling, I was adamant that I was on a road bike, so I had to use road pedals. Now, mountain bike pedals, I think are easier to clip in and out of, and they're also double-sided, which means that they're a bit easier as well. It also means that you can wear mountain bike shoes, which are way easier to walk in. So if you're stopping loads at traffic lights and things like that, you can put your foot down much easier and you're not wearing out your cleats or anything like that. They're a bit more hard wearing and I just really like them. I actually tend to use mountain bike pedals for many bike packing and ultra stuff. In reality, the power transfer isn't actually that much different for most people. If you're really looking for the marginal gains, yes, use road pedals and cleats, but mountain bike pedals are a fantastic option for you. Number four, when you're out riding, just take a spare inner tube or two. It's way easier to put a new inner tube into the tire if you've had a puncture than it is to sit by the side of the road trying to fix an old one. Basically put a spare inner tube in and then repair the old one at home. You can get glue on patches that just stick over the bits, but always try and repair them if you can. 
There's loads of different options in terms of materials for inner tubes. You can get latex ones, which are these really lightweight pink ones, very stretchy. The traditional butyl inner tube, this is a Schwalbe mountain bike inner tube, so it's quite big and bulky, but these are a bit more tougher wearing than say the latex tube. You can also get lightweight tubes like this one, which is a Schwalbe Aerodan inner tube. That is effectively one of them. Mount, that's a mountain bike one, that's also a mountain bike one. So there's loads of different options out there in terms of inner tube types and price points, but just take a spare one on your ride and repair it when you get back home. Now, number five, personally, I think layering is something that will really help you when you're riding. There's loads of different things you can do, but two things I always like to carry is a base layer. Oh, that's not a base layer. Two things I always like to carry is a base layer, like so, and a gilet. Now the base layer you put on underneath your jersey, it's an extra layer that helps to wick the sweat away from your body and in theory, keep you cooler. This one is a bit thicker, this one from Lacole, but you can get thinner ones as well. You can get long sleeve ones, short sleeve ones, vests like this, there's loads of different options out there. A gilet is basically a thin, lightweight vest. And the idea of it is that it will fold up really, really small into your pocket, like so. Now, a gilet is a fantastic bit of kit to carry on you all the time. So if it gets a bit cold, you can put it on when you're descending, for example, and the material is designed to stop the wind from getting on your chest so much. Really good way to keep yourself a little bit warmer if you need it, but a gilet and a base layer are two of my favorite bits of kit that I always have with me on a bike ride. Now number six, this is something that I got wrong loads. Measure your rides in time, not in distance. I think we've all been there where we've gone out to try and do 100 kilometers and it's taken us six hours because the route is incredibly hilly and we've stopped halfway, we've had a bonk, we've completely run out of energy and we're questioning all our decisions at the side of the road. Do your training and riding based on hours as opposed to distance you aren't gonna cover the same kind of distance on a hilly ride as you will on a flat ride. You, you, you're just not gonna be able to. So if you're working at training, think of the hour mindset as opposed to the distance, and you're not gonna find yourself having one of those awkward moments sitting by the side of a petrol station, scoffing down a sandwich and kind of hoping to come back to life. I also think it's really important not to compare your rides to someone else. Everyone is different, everyone has strengths and weaknesses, Everyone has good days and bad days. So try not to compare yourself to someone else and think about your own riding and training yourself. If you can, use a heart rate monitor or a power meter to help assist that training and look at structured programs like things you can do on Zwift and also on your Garmin computer, but also consider maybe working with a coach. Number seven, after your ride, just quickly check over your chain and cassette and maybe give it a quick clean. Ultimately, this is gonna help those parts of the bike last for longer. It's not gonna take long to give it a quick clean. You can use stuff from brands like Dynamic Bike Care that just allow you to quickly wipe down the chain and cassette. It helps with efficiency and it helps with the longevity of the products as well. Chains and cassettes aren't necessarily cheap these days, so why not try and extend the life of them as much as you can? This is something I have struggled with a lot, eating as soon as you've done a ride. Have something with a little bit of protein in it and some carbohydrates in it and it's gonna help aid recovery. When I've done these multiple multi-day trips away, the first thing I do is eat. Try and do it within 15 minutes or so after finishing your ride. It doesn't have to be a protein shake, it can be an actual meal. The two biggest wins in cycling to help your performance improve is better sleep and better nutrition. Not skipping meals or anything like that, making sure you're fueling your rides correctly, and also making sure you get in a good night's sleep. You're gonna feel way better and way stronger on the bike if you follow those two really simple things. Good food, good sleep. Eating so quickly after a ride will also help promote muscle repair and also help boost your immunity. So two really important things to think about. Now number nine, drafting. If you haven't heard of drafting, effectively what this is is riding behind someone. You can save quite a lot of energy by riding behind someone as opposed to riding next to them. And of course, in certain situations, this isn't appropriate, but sometimes if you're feeling a bit tired, it's well worth considering. If you watch pro cycling, you'll see people draft in these huge pelotons all the time. 
The person at the front is doing the most work, the person at the back is doing the least work effectively. Now this could be a way to save some energy when you're out riding with your mates. Make them do the work. In racing, drafting is a massive tactic that is used and bought in by teams and riders. You could save up to 30% of your energy by drafting on the wheel of someone. So do consider doing it. And lastly, number 10, there is no rules. Just ride, just go and have fun, enjoy cycling. If, you wanna, if you're just commuting to work, enjoy your commute. If you're going off and doing an adventure, enjoy that adventure. There are no rules. You can ride whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want. Just go and enjoy it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found these 10 tips quite useful and they're things that I probably wish I knew when I started cycling as well. If you have any other suggestions, please drop a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next one. To the pip.